creating jobs in Connecticut. Next. And welcome to the Stan Simpson Show, a program about Connecticut people and compelling issues. Make it a point to drop in every week. Governor Dan Malloy is hosting an, hosting an economic summit next week with one item on the agenda. How do you create jobs in Connecticut? Today we'll hear from a host of prominent Connecticut people who also have business as their top priority. They'll give us their advice to the governor. We're joined now by Adrian Cochran. President and CEO of the Urban League Greater Hartford, Jerry Long, prominent businessman, entrepreneur, Oz Grable, Hartford Metro Alliance, uh, head of that, former banker, ran for governor, a distinguished panel. It, it seems to me this big summit coming up, right, you have a perception issue with the state not being friendly toward business. So no matter what they throw out there, how do you change? The perception becomes a reality. So even if you throw out good proposals, you still got this perception issue. How do you change that? Oz. Well, I'll start, I think, first of all, the title should be retaining and creating jobs. The first thing that we need to do is retain the jobs that we already have. And the short point I would make to you, Stan, is that attitudes are going to be changed by the chief executive. And the governor in the nine months that he's been in office, I think, has gone a long way to changing the perception of an engaged uh, executive. He's met with, he's had over 70 of these jobs tours. He's met with businesses across the state. And I think he's made it very clear that he will be the chief marketing officer, the chief sales officer for for this state. That goes a long way to filling the void that we've suffered through in the last 10 years. I agree with Oz on that, in that the governor has really stepped forward and gone and looked at people of all sectors and talked about what can we do to help you create jobs in this economy. And as the chief marketing person in the state, I think he's doing a very good job in that regard. Ms. Cochran, you're a newcomer to the state, right? I'm sure you heard all the perceptions. Yes. Buchanan, what did you hear about Connecticut when you came in? You're involved with fundraising. What was the word on Connecticut when you came in as a newcomer? Cold mm -hmm. and personal. <laughs> How have you found it? Warm, very engaging. So there's a, there's a great disconnect, right? Perception is yes. cold and impersonal, but yes. it takes you being in here to realize it's engaging. That's a problem because if I'm a business somewhere, if I hear cold and personal, I may not even want to say hello to you in the first place. So, again, how do you – back to talk can be cheap, and the governor also, while he's uh, been out there talking to various groups, he also has raised the income tax on corporations. Yes. He's yes. forced the issue of vacations on corporations. So, on the one hand, talking is a great game, but how do you – really show where the meat is. We just do, where's the beef? <laughs> where's the beef? <laughs> well, the beef, I think, is in, the, in his, his perception and, and changing the perception of all of us that are involved in job creation. And if that perception gets changed, then more companies may want to start looking at Connecticut as a place to grow their business and to grow jobs in that area. One of the things we can say about Connecticut is that We've got a significant talent pool here and a lot of skilled workers that are here in Connecticut. So that's one thing that we can really hang our hat on, and I think that we should be marketing that. Hmm. So now where do you, with sectors, you know, as a layman, third-party person here, it seems to be you grow jobs simply by finding hot sectors. You can't manufacture jobs. You've got to have, you got to find out where the hot sectors and grow them, whether it's biotech, whether it's research and development, what's hot out there right now. What do you guys think about that? Where are the hot sectors? What are we missing? And what should we be looking at as far as sectors that are emerging? Just before you get to hot stuff, let's yep. not forget the core assets that are already here. We have Such over 75,000 insurance jobs. Those are jobs that people in the rest of this country would die for. But are they dying themselves? Isn't insurance dying Absolutely on the line? Not. Okay. Absolutely not. Absolutely uh, not, uh, Stan. The, the concept that the insurance industry is dying is such a, fa a fallacy. We're in tough times financially. Any financial institution is in tough times. But the, th the lifeblood of this country is our financial system. The, insur the insurance industry was, was, was essentially invented here in Hartford and in the state. So I think the governor has even shifted some of his language about saying this is the, but one time saying, well, maybe we're no longer the insurance capital of the world, saying we are the insurance capital of the world. The second thing we can't take our eye off of is precision manufacturing and what that means to us. And the, the shift third, the third, the third. What is that, by the way? What is precision manufacturing? Well, it's, 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 it's all the UTC companies for number right. one. It's all the, the private companies that support UTC mm -hmm. companies and, are, and in turn are supported by them. Them. Uh, 
Look, we all want to go to the next big thing, but be, that's my point about retaining jobs. The, the first thing you have to do is take care of your current customer. That's your next best customer. So the IT that Jerry's in, that's a core insurance business. When you look at what insurance and banking do, they're data processing organizations, really, at the end, at the end of the day. But one is it where, 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 where there are new things are coming or in the health care area. There's no question. And the governor's commitment of $800 plus million dollars that's real to money, the health right? center, that's a money. big, big deal on this. And, you know, Stan, you said about the, on the income tax, just we're not always going to agree with the governor on things. The governor also inherited the largest single deficit, two-year deficit that we had. Everybody knew we were going to have to do something. Cut spending for sure. But there was going to have to be some adjustment in the revenue. And our hope is that as the economy comes back, that two years from now, he'll be in a position, ideally, to rescind some of those tax increases. And we can't lose sight of this. This is very important. You talk about in-demand jobs and hot jobs, et cetera. People have to be prepared to assume those positions. So we can create, if they're not educated if they don't have the appropriate skill sets, then it's not going to make a difference. So while I absolutely agree, jobs, 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 it's the conversation of the National Urban League. Mm. It's the focus at the Urban League of Greater Hartford. But we have to get education in there because without mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. and preparation, jobs, mm -hmm. jobs, jobs won't matter. And folks forget that, right? You can't absolutely. really have economic yeah. development without having That's a real right. strong educational system, right? right. Absolutely. Briefly about that, Oz, you're from a business uh, background in the banking uh, you hear a lot of complaints from the corporate leaders that you can't find qualified working pool out there. So how do we balance both? Because that takes money, too, and resources. And it takes money to bring in business and money for education. And we're cr all crying poor. How do you juggle that? The need to well, I just say one thing. One thing the governor has done is he's realigned the edu higher educational system. So you now have a, a, a head of the Board of Regents. Uh, Bob Kennedy, Robert Kennedy coming down from Maine. So you have the four, your, your alma mater and the three other CSU and universities in there, plus the two-year schools. And, and instead of having three distinct silos that we've had before, you now are putting those together. There's a, there's a, a desire to, in, to both to, to engage the business community with our higher education leaders at, at, at that level. And just to come back to the city, I mean, you, you live the city's experience, and I think what Adamowski did uh, five years ago to start the reform in the system, what Kijimoto, Dr. Kijimoto is going to continue, I think bodes well. You can't, you're not going to solve this problem in two years. Mm. This is a generational problem that's got to be attacked. Right. Yeah. And I think the governor and the mayor and, and the superintendent here in the city are, are, are very much about those things. In 30 seconds, Jerry Long, you've been a successful business person. You were on this computer stuff before folks knew what a computer was, basically, <laughs> right? You've done well. What was your biggest frustration as a business person, and what is it now as somebody who is doing well in business? Well, I think as we look at when I started in business, I think the really big issue that I had to deal with was access to capital. Mm -hmm. Going out trying to pitch my business plan to people who were looking at it and looked at me like I had three heads to say that, oh, that's not going to work, that's not going to work, that's not going to work. And we still hear some noise around access to capital. But I think a lot of noise, right? A lot of noise yeah. around that. But I think that if business owners are prepared, there's money out there. And community banks are doing a very good job at analyzing risk, analyzing credits, and providing that access to credit. So, you know, that's been an issue, but I think that we can't overcome that issue. All right, we're going to go to break real quick. The banks are sitting on a trillion dollars that they're not loaning. The corporations are sitting on a trillion dollars they aren't investing. We're going to talk what to do about that because the money is there, right? The reality is still, quote, unquote, uh, Recession, that money is actually there, it's just not being invested. So we'll talk about that in a second. When we come back, we'll talk about the politics of job creation and how much political posturing has contributed to the recession. You're watching the Stan Simpson Show. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter too.